Hi, welcome to yet another video and in this video we will be comparing the mathematics in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering and civil engineering. And this will not be a comparison between which is the best among the three or which is the hardest or simplest among the three, but it will be comparing the grade that you got in mathematics with the mathematics in those three areas so that you can compare your interest, the topic that you used to like with the topic that you find in these three areas and decide which is the best idea for you. Personally, I believe each one of us should pursue a course of his interest and therefore I do not try to insist that you pursue a particular area, but I usually try to give you enough information that can help you make your decision. But make sure you do enough research about that particular course so that the moment you start that course, you can sail through the course successively. Because I've seen students who waste a lot of resources, that is in terms of money and time, repeating years, doing refers, and this money could have been spent uh, in trying to gain more practical skill in that particular area by doing various short courses. Because instead of spending that money to repeat an year or to do a refer, it would be better off you zero through the course successively within the allocated time for certificate two years, for diploma three years, and that extra money that you could have uh, used to do refers and to do uh, to repeat years, you spend it investing more in yourself in terms of practical skills. Now let us go directly to the task ahead, and because these are three areas, I will only do the comparison for diploma only, and because I've done previous videos for mathematics in electrical engineering, for mathematics in civil engineering, for mathematics in mechanical engineering. I would like you to go and check the videos in the link shown here or in my video description here and you check the requirement or the topics for mathematics for certificate courses. I've also done for degree for electrical and I've compared this with the, the mathematics syllabus for high school students. We are going to start with the syllabus for building. For building and civil, the mathematics is the same. And for the first year of study, that is uh, year one, you go through mathematics one and the topic in mathematics one, which we have done in the previous video, are uh, the number system, indices and logarithm, algebra, conic geometry, sequence and series, graph, trigonometry, uh, latitude and uh, longitude, coordinate geometry, mensuration, permutation and combination, vectors, probability one and statistic one. And for building, we have said you should give, we said we should give a lot of interest to topics that involve mensuration, areas, volumes, a uh, topic that involves a uh, perimeter, circumference. We should give a lot of interest to topics that involve geometry, longitude, latitudes, and so on. And in mathematics too, uh, there are topics like complex numbers, differential calculus, hyperbolic function, calculus, integral calculus, that is ordinary differential equations or ODE. There is an extension of OD which is D operator and also there is power series. For the third year of study, mathematics 3, you go through topics like um, numerical method, matrices, add probability and statistics. So all you have to remember is that for building and civil engineering, put a lot of interest, if you are in high school, put a lot of interest in topics that include measurement, geometry, and mensuration, uh, the mathematics syllabus for mechanical engineering. And remember we said for the entire mechanical engineering field, for neck examinations, the mathematics is simply the same. So when we go through the syllabus for one area, it will be enough for us to cover the rest. For the first year of study, that is engineering mathematics one. Now take note, try to compare with the civil engineering. And this fraction of decimals, we have seen this is a topic in almost all engineering courses. Indices and logarithm and algebra, they are there in uh, civil engineering and building. Trigonometry and permutation and combinations. Binomial expansion, coordinate geometry uh, and complex numbers again, we have seen them. But I think complex numbers for civil engineering, it is in the second year of study, but here it is in the first year of study. Hyperbolic functions and finally, there are there is inverse functions. For the second year of study, that is engineering mathematics too, for mechanical engineering courses. 
you find topics like probability, statistics, sequence and series. You find topics like uh, vectors, mensuration, differential calculus, that is various methods of differentiation. And finally, you find topics like uh, integral calculus and power series. So, so far, that is what you have covered by the second year of study when you are pursuing a course in mechanical engineering. In the third year of study, that is uh, mathematics 3, you will cover topics like uh, vector field theory, matrices to numerical methods, double integrals, and differential calculus. I think this is supposed to be not differential calculus, but it's supposed to be uh, ordinary differential equations or ODE. And then there is uh, Laplace transforms and Fourier series. And then finally, for the third year of study, there is uh, the last topic here, which is Loki. Now let us move on to electrical so that we can be able to draw a conclusion. This is a syllabus for diploma in electrical and electronic engineering, telecommunication options. And remember I said for electrical engineering again, uh, the mathematics is the same for electrical and electronic engineering power option, electrical and electronic engineering, telecommunication option, and electrical and electronic engineering uh, instrumentation options. For the first year of study, that is mathematics one. You encounter topics like indices and logarithm algebra. And we say this topic, indices and logarithm algebra, trigonometry, they are very important for electrical engineering. Hyperbolic function is important in electrical engineering. The other application in transmission line. Then there is inverse functions and complex numbers. Complex numbers I usually find it as a very important topic in electrical engineering. Because most of a lot of um, electrical engineering quantities are complex in nature. It's a topic that may not have a lot of relevance in mechanical and civil engineering, but now when it comes to electrical engineering, complex numbers is an important topic. It's coordinate geometry, uh, permutation and combination, and binomial expansion, calculus 1 and calculus 2. Calculus 1 is the differential calculus, which is various methods of differentiation, and calculus 2 is integral calculus, which is various methods of integration. So you can see the mathematics for electrical engineering is a little bit more intensive in that quite a good number of topics that are in the first year of study, uh, you'll find them in second year of study in other areas. And again, there are more topics here, the 11 topics, uh, which makes the work a little bit more involving. For the second year of study, that is mathematics two. You do topics like uh, vector field theory, matrices, ordinary differential equation, and partial differentiation. There is Laplace transform. This topic you have seen is in that year of study in mechanical engineering, power series, and the statistics. And finally, there is probability. In engineering mathematics 3, you encounter topics like uh, Fourier series, which you have seen is in the that year of study for mechanical engineering, uh, multiple integrals, uh, that is double and triple integrals, again in mechanical engineering that year of study. There is uh, vector field theory, which again you have seen is in mechanical engineering. Then there is a matrices too, and there is also another topic that is unique to electrical engineering, that is complex variables. So as we have seen, um, the mathematics for civil engineering and uh, building, to be honest, is a little bit less intense. So if you think uh, you have a little bit of challenge with mathematics, I think the civil engineering and building courses will be the best for you. The mathematics for mechanical and electrical is a little bit more intensive. And therefore, if you think you have that potential in mathematics and you have interest in mechanical or civil engineering, then it would be a good idea for you to pursue mechanical engineering or civil engineering. Remember, this is not a competition about which is the best, which is harder, which is lighter, but it's about matching your potentials to a particular course. Remember, as always, always share the video to a relative, to a brother, to a sister, to a cousin, to somebody who you know is planning to pursue a particular course so that they can pursue a course based on the information, practical information, factual information, not based on what they have been hearing. This is marketable, this is not marketable. It's not about which one is marketable and which one is not marketable. It's about our potentials. It's about are we marketable ourselves before we can say a particular course is marketable or not. And we can only be marketable if we match our interest, our talents with the particular courses we want to pursue. 
and at, that, at this juncture I believe I've given you enough information to help you match your potentials to a particular course and because there will be more videos coming ensure you subscribe to the channel and now let us meet in the next video I believe I've not wasted your time in this video and certainly even in the next video I'll definitely not waste your time